we have just about enough time to get through our Bible class this afternoon. I did tell you last week that the Bible class is part one. Therefore, we will conclude this afternoon with part two under the same title, Nearer Than When We First Believed. Nearer Than When We First Believed. All right, so please join me as we pray, and then we will begin. Let us pray. Loving Lord, eternal Father, we thank you for just being with us today. Amen. We are grateful to be able to worship you unmolested. Still to be able to worship you freely. These things have an expiry date. But until then, O oh God, and even then, we will continue to praise you. Teach us, Lord. Holy Spirit, teach me while I teach, and as we grow and as we study, so we may know, and our faith may be established. Bless us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so remember, this is Bible class, and so I'm not preaching. You are allowed to ask questions as we go forward. All right, let's move to our slide. We are picking up from last week, and we begin at Matthew 24, verse 36, and it says, But of that day, Matthew 24, verse 36, But of that day and hour, the day and the hour, know it no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You know, you know what I love? When we study Bible, we must understand that every word has its bearing. Now, what will we not know? Only the Father in heaven. What, 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 what will we not know? The day and the hour. And the hour. Do you see here in that? Do you see here in that? No. A year is made up of several months. I don't even see months there. Of the day and the hour, know it what? Amen. What's a day? How much days in the week? Seven. Seven. So it's, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we know these are pagan names. We can start by saying first day, second day, third day, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. No, the Sabbath for the seventh. Okay? So that's days. Okay? So of the day, all right, no is no man. So which day of the week will Christ come? No it no man? It will be a guesswork, and we don't do guesswork. We're Seventh-day Adventists. Even though I jokingly always say, Brother Patrick, that Jesus might come on a Friday. I normally jokingly say that because that's the best time to catch Adventists. Right on the edge of the Sabbath. They're always fine doing something they ought not to be doing. All right? I say, Jesus will come right on the Friday and catch them. That's what I'm saying. But the truth is, come in, Sister Andrea. The truth is, of the day, knoweth no man. What's our? No man. How many hours make a day? 24. 24 hours. 24 hours make a day. Okay? All right? So the hour can be, what hour are we in now? 7.02. 7, right? So we're in the 7th period. And it's p.m. Post meridian. All right? It's p.m. Okay? So we know how the clock works. Every hour has the opposite of that hour of the day. Do you understand? You have 7 p.m. You also have 7 a.m. You have 1 p.m. You have 1 a.m. So, so we understand that. So the day runs from 12 until it goes back to 12. So that's hour. So which hour will Jesus come? Which hour will he come? No man know it. Sister Andrea. I always think it doesn't say it takes seven days to get to heaven. So I always think Jesus knows it on Sunday. Well, Sister Andrea says it takes seven days to get to heaven. So Jesus might come on a Sunday. Still guesswork. Can we agree? But, but what we're doing, we're not, we're not sending these out on air as a doctrine. 
We are reasoning, all right? We are still allowed to reason, but we don't use guesswork to make the standard. Agreed? But what we're getting from this text, and I understand what she's saying, what is clear is that we have to keep a salad on the sea of glass. That's clear. And people like William Miller, who have never kept the Sabbath, but he saved based on the knowledge that he knew at the time, and he worshipped God based on that. An angel is placed at his grave to take him up on the first resurrection. He'll definitely keep a Sabbath before he gets into heaven, all right? And so we'll keep a Sabbath on the sea of glass, but of the day and hour knoweth no man. I don't see the year there. I don't see the year there. I'm getting something, all right? Of the dead, I will know it, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of now were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know what, you know what, you, you know, you know we have not looked at verse 37? Let me ask you a question. Did, uh, did Noah know the day and hour when the flood would come or the rain? No. no. Do you know the year? No. no. Where you get that from? What does the name Methuselah mean? No. Want me to tell you what the name Methuselah mean? Yes. In the year that he died, the flood would come. Did you know Methuselah and even his sons, did you know they helped Noah build the ark? But they never saw the flood. Are you there with me? In the year Methuselah died, so Noah knew the flood was coming. As a matter of fact, let me put it to you. When Noah went into the ark and God shut the door, in that very year, whichever year it was, the flood came. But how many days after he was in the ark, the rain began to fall? Seven, Seven days. So did he know the day or the hour? No. But did he know the time period? Yes. Did he know the flood is coming right now and the rain's going to fall? Ark is finished, go into the ark. Animals marching into the ark. Now, how did the animals get in? Did Noah call them? No. Who brought them? No. God. Was that a sign to Noah that the time is now? Yes. Because they were marching in. Can you tell me how yes. did they march in? Hey, Advent is on clear or I hear somebody jumping out one, two, by two. We are sitting there, we don't make those mistakes. Let's do it properly now. How did they march in? Clean by seven and unclean by two. We don't make that mistake. That's in Genesis chapter seven. This is why we are different people, people in this world. If you ask that question to any religious group, what would they say? Two by two. Where they get that from? That's not biblical. They watch too. They watch too much movie. Eh? And where the song make from? You see what I'm saying? We must work from the word. And what did the Bible say? Clean by. Seven and unclean by? Two. So how much pigs went in? Two. Two. Mama pig and papa pig. It had to be mama and papa pig. No LGBT thing right there. Are you there with me? How would they reproduce after the flood? Can you follow church? Yes. Okay. And, and cows were going by how much? Seven. Seven because they are clean. And you can read about clean and unclean in Leviticus chapter? Eleven. Eleven. All right. Good. So, but as the days of Noah were... So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Will we know the day and the hour? Not until the Lord tell us at such time. But we can know the period. Close as possible. All right, let's go to the next slide. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I want you to write these texts down. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And we are going to start from verse 1. First Thessalonians 5 verse 1. It says, but of the what? Time and the what? Season. Watch this. Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. This is Paul. Watch verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day... What, what, what again? The day. Yeah, but what again? That the, the day. day. It still fits with the, first, the verse before it. No man know what the? Day. Day nor the? Church, what, were you sleeping? It's Bible class, you have to talk back. No man know the? Day. Nor the? Hour. All right, and this is First Thessalonians 5. For yourselves know perfectly that the? Day. Day of the the day. day of the Lord. So come it as a what? Season. Do you know when the thief is coming? No. Mm. Still on the day. Let's go to verse 3. 
for when they shall say what? Peace and what? Safety. Then what comes? Sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. It's interesting that Paul uses that. It's very interesting. Does a woman know when her time has come? Yes. Does she know that she's about to have baby? Yes. But can she tell when the oxytocin is going to start to work oh. and she's going to start to feel the contraction and the pain? Oh. Are you not following what I'm saying in the scripture? A seventh day advent is just like a woman in travail. When a woman gets to nine months, she knows that at this particular period, it's two weeks before or two weeks after. So does she know the period? Yes. Exactly. So within this time, at any time, the pain can come. But does she know the exact day and the hour no. in the day no. that the pain is going to no. come? No. So why is it Seventh-day Adventists like to use these texts when people try to study periods and seasons and time to say we don't know the day and hour. They don't even know what they're talking about. It's exactly what the text says. You don't know the day or the hour. And the Bible keeps explaining itself like a woman in travail. She knows she's in the ninth month. She knows she's at the end of her third trimester. She knows baby's about to come. She knows so much that baby's about to come that doctors can tell when a baby's poster. Mm -hmm. Nurses know, doctors know. Because it's the time pass or the baby don't come in. You have diabetes? This baby is going to be oversized, X, Y, Z. We know. But the woman just can't tell. So the husband better get the gas in the car. He better be sleeping light. Because at any time the wife can say, the water is gone. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. But he will never able to tell the hour in the day. Are you there with me? Yes. All right. Let the Bible explain itself. It says now, but he, brethren, when Paul says ye brethren, who is he talking about? Church. Church. Yeah, brethren. Ye brethren are not in what? Right. That, that day should overtake you as a what? So should the church know? Yes. You're not in darkness. No. You should know as close as is possible. You don't know the day or the hour in the day. But you should know as best and close as is possible. Okay. Ye are all the children of light. That's what we are. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Amen. So will we know the day? No. Will we know the hour of the day? No. But can we know something though? Yes. Yes. Can we have the idea as best as possible? Yes. Yes. Of the season and of the time. Yes. All right. We're not doing no guesswork. Can you follow me, church? Yes. We're going to let what speak. Bible in the right hand and what's in my left? Testimony, Testimony of Jesus Christ, which is a? Right. All right, let's go now. Psalms 19. For a thousand years, in thy sight are but as what? Yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. For God, a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. Can I tell you that the week cycle tells you about the whole of salvation? Yes. If, if a thousand years is as a day to the Lord, then how many days is in a week? Seven, seven. So let's use the principle. If a thousand, day, if a thousand years is like a day, a day is like a year. Thousand years. So how many thousand years is that? Seven. Can only be seven. Can never be eight. Because after the seven, what happens to the week? Does it start again? Uh, does it cycle again, church? Yeah. It cycles again. Alright, just check your phone. Make sure Satan knows how to distract church. Alright, make sure your phone is off or in silent. Alright, let's refocus. Let's refocus. So, I want to make a bold statement. Mm -hmm. Salvation process cannot pass 6,000. Why do you think I make that statement? Mm -hmm. right, let, me say, let, me, let me start again. The weekly cycle tells you the time of salvation history. Mm -hmm. There are only how much days in a week? 
seven. We're going to go to another text. going to show you that a thousand years is like a what? A day. So what's the most thousands you can get? Only 7,000. Now, the process of salvation cannot pass 6,000. It cannot. But you said 7,000, Pastor. Sure. But according to Revelation, we have to take out a thousand out of it. Why? Because we're going to be with Christ. Yes, the millennium. That's going to be his prison. Satan, isn't that true? So if you take out the seven, now watch me, watch me, come in my sister, watch me. If you take out the 7,000, or rather take out 1,000, how much you're left without the seven? And we are in it. Six. Six. All right? It's not joking too much ahead now. Watch it. Six. We're going to take our time. Six. Now, it cannot pass that. I'm going to show you. All right. Let's go forward. Next text. Next slide. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, and we're starting at verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. What is that? That one day is with the Lord as a what? Thousand, thousand years. And a thousand years as what? One day. So we're not guessing, we're using the Bible. Okay. The Lord is not what? Slap concerning his promise as a some men count what? Slackness. But is what? Long suffering to us war. He is what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That text, go back, that text is dealing with salvation. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And then verse 8 is dealing with the time. A day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. The weekly cycle is also set for salvation. But in the weekly cycle, it's a day. In salvation, it spans thousands of years. It cannot pass six because a thousand is cut off for the millennium. All right. Is pastor just talking off the top of his head? We established with Bible and All right. Let's go forward. Revelation chapter 20. Let's start at verse 4. And I saw what? Thrones, and they sat upon them. And what? Judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were what? Beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had they received his mark, upon their foreheads and it says are in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ how much? So you have to take off a thousand out of the seven. So we are left with how much? Six. Because by this time can you agree that the, 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 the war with sin is over? Can you agree church? Because they are doing what? Watch this. They, they, the word of God, and they had not worshipped the what? Beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead, or in their hands. So, as the mark of the beast Christ is passed, based on the text, come look at all of it, has the mark of the beast Christ is passed? Of course it didn't pass. Well, you know, that is not reading and understanding. Listen, and I saw the thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of who? Jesus. And for the word of God. And it said, and which had not, had not, had not, is that present tense or past tense? Past. You have to read these things, beloved, and every word has its value. Which had not worshipped the beast, the beast, neither his image, neither had received ED, his mark upon their foreheads are in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So, has the mark of the beast crisis passed? Yes. All right. So, like how the mark of the beast crisis has passed, has the time of um, the great time of trouble passed? Yes. Has the national Sunday law passed? Yes. Therefore, the seven plagues were fall past. Yes. So, they are reigning with who? Christ. So, has Christ returned? Yes. Uh -huh. Who said no? Yes. Oh, they were 
Mary in the Christ. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I was going to school, I learned not to answer too quick. When teacher asks a question, you think. And then you answer. Alright? Alright? We're learning, okay? So, receive this mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So, we're getting so much things from this one verse alone. That's how you have to study the Bible. You mustn't read, you must study the Bible. This one verse alone is packed with so much things. We have learned from this that the Sunday law has passed, Mark of the Beast crisis has passed, time of trouble has passed, God's people has come to it, the Christ has come and received them, and we are reigning with Christ how long? So, how much time is given for the process of salvation, the whole, the whole process of salvation? 6,000. Okay? But that reflects the week. And how much days is in the week? Seven. Seven. So a day is a thousand years and a thousand years a day. So what happened to the next thousand if it's six? Rain with Christ. Rain with Christ. How much? Thousand. All right. Let's, let's, move. let's keep working. Let's keep working. All right. Let's read this. It says, Robert Johnson, the Ph.D. Chair of the New Testament Department at the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary. Andrews University, he wrote an article on the subject which can be found at, there's the website, okay? Wrote an article. Now, in this article, he shows that some of the early Advent pioneers, most notably J.N. Andrews, were firm believers in this principle that we, we've been talking about, a thousand years a day, okay? But that this idea was later discarded by, amongst others, Uriah Smith. I want to say something about Uriah Smith. Good pioneer, did work in the Church of God, but never always had it all together as it relates to truth. I want you to understand, he wrote a book, Daniel and the Revelation, good book. But there are some pointers there that, yeah, not a hundred, all right? Now, let's read here. Um, this is coming from Spirit of Prophecy. What is the, what is the um, reference? Signs of the time. September 20th, 1899. Let's read. As late as 1899, Adventist publication stated firmly that the end would be sometime around the year 1900. Now, we have to best as possible try to stay away from that. Okay? We have to best as possible try to stay around, away from that because as 1900 passed, how long has it been as it passed? 124 years. That's how long 1900 has passed. So you see what that can do? That can cause people to lose faith. Mm -hmm. Are you there with me? So we are going to stay away from making that mistake. All right. So they thought that it was sometime around the year 1900. Ellen White died 15 years after that. So she should have seen the second coming of Christ. Now, this belief that the end will come sometime during a somewhat extended period with an end point can be called what they said, soft time setting. As, con un as contrasted with setting a definite firm date, hard time setting. So you have soft time setting, hard time setting. So we're going to try our best to walk a narrow line away from that. All right, next slide. Now, does the spirit of prophecy throw, throw any light on the subject? It's a question. Does the spirit of prophecy throw any light on the subject? All right. Now, I'm going to read what it says down here. It says, there are in fact 42, which is 74 if you count the compilation, 6,000 year and 41, 4,000 year statements in our writing. And we're going to look at some of them. Just a few. Just a few. All right? She uses the phrases about 6,000 years. I want you to underline the word about 13 times. Okay? Almost 6,000 once. Okay? Nearly 6,000 12 times. And three times, she states, more than 6,000 or over 6,000. And the rest are for 6,000 years. So we want to understand what is being said. Next slide. Now, this is from one bio, page 366, paragraph 1. In fact, this time frame was confirmed in visions. Now let me tell you something. 
When it's confirmed in vision, it is a fact. Because that means God himself is saying this. Can we, can we follow that church? Yes. All right, so this is vision. All right, it says, the vision at Lovett's Grove, Ohio. Pastor. Pastor. Yes, sir. What does Bible mean? Huh? Bible. It's a biography. Oh. B-I-O. You can, you can type it into the app. Oh. One B-I-O and page 366, paragraph one. All right? So it says, the vision at Lovett's Grove, Ohio, on a Sunday afternoon in mid-March 1858, so this is a time when this vision was given, was one of great importance. In this, the theme of the great controversy between Christ and his angels on the one side and Satan and his angels on the other was seen as one continuous and closely linked chain of events spanning how much? How much? Six thousand. So, so, so we're talking about the great controversy between who? Christ and and Satan. Okay, the angels, and it's going to span how much right here? Six thousand years. That's not an if. That's not a maybe. This is a vision. Six thousand years. Okay. This vision has put Seventh Day Adventists into a unique position with clear-cut views of the working of providence in the history of our world. It says, a viewpoint quite different from that held by secular historians, who see events of history as the interplay between the actions of men, often seemingly the result of chance or natural developments. In other words, this vision and others of the great conflict of the ages yield a philosophy of history that answers many questions and in prophetic forecast gives the assurance of final victory of good over evil. Clear, it's going to span only 6,000 years. So it's not going to pass that. The great controversy, okay? Beginning to the end, this is a great controversy. Only 6,000 years. It's not going to pass that. Only 6,000 years. All right? We get this from the scope. All right, let's go forward. What about the statements more than or over 6,000 years? That's very important. Now, Warren H. John. The seminary librarian at Andrews University researched this issue, okay? And he came to the conclusion that Ellen White believed that there were exactly 4,000 years between the creation of man and the birth of Christ. That's, that's his conclusion. And that her consistent position was that the world was less than 6,000 years old. All right, hear that viewpoint. Let's go forward. Now, number one. This is found in Historical Sketches, page 133. I can, I can tell you, try and write down the reference. You can go back over there, okay? Historical Sketches, page 133. Once you have the Ellen White app, you can find these, all of these references. It says, listen what she says. More than 6,000 years of continual practice. Now, this statement does not deal with the age of this earth, or the time since the fall, but with how long the devil has been in the deception business. So whenever people say, but she has other statements, one says more than, over, you need to understand the context. What do you need to understand the what? Context. Now, more than 6,000 years of continual practice, again, this statement does not deal with the age of this earth or the time since the fall, but with how long the devil has been in the deception business. Can I ask you a question? How long has he been in it? When did he start? From the days of eternity. Days of eternity. When did he start? Garden of Eden? No. Oh, no. Revelation 12 tells us where. Amen. There was war where? Amen. So can you now agree with the more than 6,000? Yeah. And understand the concepts. All right, that's number one. Let's go. Next slide. Number two. The second statement is from the story of Jesus. 
And for more than 6,000 years, okay, this is Story of Jesus, SJ, page 183, paragraph 3. Okay? Now, the second statement from the Story of Jesus. And I begin. And for more than 6,000 years, in its forms of beauty and gifts of sustenance, the earth has borne witness to the Creator's love. Now, this statement comes from the chapter, The Home of the Saved, and deals with the new earth, when the earth will be about 7,000 years old. Alright? So we again must understand the context again. This statement here comes from the chapter, The Home of the Same, and deals with the new earth, when the earth will be about 7,000 years old. Again, here's the reference. Go and read. Now, let's go to number three. Now, this statement comes from Christian Temperance and Bible IG. What I'm doing here, I showed you the quote from Bible. She says it will span what? 6,000 years. People will use other statements where she says more than 6,000 and confuse the issue. But all of them have their context. Can we agree? The one that I use, she said, the great controversy. That's between good and evil from sin started on this earth. It's going to rage for how many years? Only 6,000 years. Let's look again. Let's look at statement number three. She says, this statement comes from Christian Temperance and Bible IG. There's the reference. Page 154. And it states, the continual transgression of man for over what? 6,000 years. Now, in 1977, Dr. Robert Gentry of Earth Science Associated contacted the White Estate regarding this statement and was told that this was a copying error. Okay? And that the original first source from which it was taken, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 3, page 491, 492, did not contain the word over, which is right here, which is um, right here, over. It did not contain the word over. Moreover, Ellen White did not use the word over. When she used the earlier, what's that down there? Material. When she used the earlier material to write the book, Desire of Ages. Didn't use the term over. Now, so according to the Spirit of Prophecy, how long will sin reign, church? 6,000. Now, after 6,000 years of sin, the earth was what? Renewed. renewed. Earth was renewed. Now, this is from Adventist Home, page 539, paragraph 3. It says, the great plan of redemption, okay, results in fully bringing back the world into God's favor. It says, all that was lost by sin is what? Restored. Not only man, but the earth is what? Redeemed. To be the eternal abode of the what? Obedient. It says, watch this now. For how long? For how long? For 6,000 years, Satan has what? Struggled to maintain what? Possession of the earth. Now God's original purpose in its creation is what? Accomplished. For how, many, for how long you struggle? Six and not, not, not one year over that. For 6,000 years, sir, it says, The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So let's make it clear. This is a time period. 6,000 years as it relates to sin, and as it relates to the great controversy. Hmm. All right, let's go forward. It says now, so when according to the spirit of prophecy, will 6,000 years have elapsed since the fall of man? Now, at Christ's baptism, sin had reigned what? 4,000 years on earth. That was what? So watch me now. Baptism of Christ, Was which year? AD 27. At this time, Ellen White makes the statement, sin reigned for what? 4,000 years. 
Sin reigning for 4,000 years. All right? Watch this. I'm going to read for you. This is from um, CON. So that speaks the conflict. And that's page 32, paragraph 1. Again, write these references and check them yourself. It says here, Christ in the one wilderness of temptation stood in whose place? Adam's place to bear the what? The test he failed to endure. Here, Christ overcame in the sinner's behalf. For what? For what? Four thousand years after who? Adam. Adam turned his back upon the what? Light of his own. Separated from the presence of God, the human family had been departing each successive generation farther from the origin, knowledge, purity, wisdom, and knowledge which Adam possessed in Eden. Christ bore the sins and the infirmities of the race as they existed when he came to the earth to help man in behalf of the race. Now with the weakness of fallen man upon him, he was to stand the temptations of what? Satan upon all points on which man could be assailed. Upon all points on which man could be assailed. What are we talking about? Christ in the wilderness of temptation. Okay? So, as, as, as it says, in the wilderness of temptation, wilderness of temptation, wilderness of temptation. Which year was this? Which year was that? 8027. After he was baptized, where did he go? Wilderness of temptation. So again, this is what? AD 27. How many years? It's right there. There you go. 4,000 years. Okay? So not only that, something is important in this quote. It says, um, Christ in the wilderness of temptation stood in Adam's place to bear the test he failed, to endure. Here, Christ overcame in the sinner's behalf 4,000 years when? When? After Adam turned his back upon the light of his own. Therefore, I can do something like this. Adam failure. Christ in wilderness 4,000 years. Is that clear? Can you follow that from the quote? Can you follow that from the quote, church? After, it says here, after Adam had turned his back. When did he turn his back? When did Adam turn his back? Genesis chapter 3, when did he turn his back? When he fell into sin. You have to talk about, you know, I went to fall asleep like oh, no phone, fall in asleep. <laughs> Want to stand up and stretch and let the blood flow down? All right, let's fight, let's fight. All right, so you have to talk back to me, church. Is it clear what I'm doing so far? Yes. Yes. Do you see it from my head, from my writing, or rather you see it from inspiration? Inspiration. inspiration. So at the point, we're not working with a year at that point, but at the point when Adam fell, till the point in the wilderness, AD 27, watch me now, how many years? 4,000. It's right there. Let's go to the next slide. Now, this is still conflict, and it's 45 paragraph 1. All right, it says, The Savior of the world had no controversy with Satan, who was expelled from heaven because he was no longer worthy of a place there. It says, He who could influence the angels of God against their supreme ruler, and against his son, their loved commander, and enlist their sympathy for himself, was capable of any deception. Watch this, watch this now, church. 4,000 years had been warring against the what? Government of God, and had lost none of his skill or power to tempt and deceive. Do you see that? There it is again. So the Savior of the world had no controversy with Satan, who was expelled from heaven because he was no longer worthy of a place there. 
He who hath influenced the angels of God against their supreme ruler, against his son, that Jesus, their love commander, and enlist their sympathy for himself, was capable of any deception. 4,000 years he had been warring against the government of God and had lost none of his skill or power to tempt and deceive. Yes. Yes, sorry. Confrontation. Thank you. C-O-N is confrontation. Thank you. It says here, this is confrontation, page 78, paragraph 2. Let's read. On Jordan's banks, the voice from heaven attended by the what? Manifestation from excellent glory proclaim Christ to be the son of the eternal. What's that? Yeah, but what's that? On Jordan's bank, what, what is this? Baptism. Did the voice declare Jesus to be the son at the baptism? Yes. yes, church. So it's a baptism. Satan was to what? Personally encounter the head of the kingdom which he came to overthrow. If he failed, he knew that he was what? Lost. Therefore, the power of his temptation was in accordance with the greatness of the object which he would lose or gain. Again, again, church. For what? 4,000 years. Ever since the what? Declaration was made to who? Mm, that's clear. What declaration are we talking about? What declaration was made to Adam? Thou shalt bruise his knee. What, what, what's the text, church? Genesis, Genesis 3, verse 1. 15. These things are clear. It says, uh, for, for what? 4,000 years ever. And since the declaration was made to who? Adam. That the seed of the woman should be bruised. The what? Serpent said, he had been planning his manner of attack. Who has, his, who, who has he been planning this manner of attack? Who was that seed? Was it was it was it um Cain? As as Adam and Eve believed? Uh-uh, uh-uh. That had prophesied about who to come? Jesus. Jesus. And for how long at the coming of Christ now, at the baptism, for how long has Satan been there planning? Four thousand years. Now, now. Question. Yes, I, I see the hand. Now, how many quotes have we read so far? About 4,000 years. About three. Going on. Now, how much time must the great controversy span? All right. Um, Sister Dunn. Okay, so I noticed that you mentioned that the 4,000 years start at the fall of Adam. I didn't mention that. The quote. Yeah, the quote. Yeah, the quote is said. Alright. Right. Okay, the quote say that. Yeah, yes. So that is that does can I say that um Adam was twenty seven years? Well here here Because it was it was um here now here here's what I'm gonna ask you. How long passed before Adam said? Thirty years. Donald throw us up. But I can tell you, we don't know. The we second don't know. Adam tell you. But, but, but. The second Adam tell you. It's around 30 and a half years, um, a year. Well, uh, one of the things I like to do that makes my life easy, I don't suppose. Everything I do, I have Bible and the Bible. Very clear. That's why I stay out of trouble and I never get into controversy. And I never make statements and get myself into trouble. Never. Because right. I have the Bible for the prophecy. Yes. Okay. So, why, so you'd have to answer that question. So why I'm asking yes, yes. is that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. From, from Adam's sin yes. to when Jesus um, baptized uh -huh. is 2780. Yes. That's what you. Uh, that's what. Me? That's, that's what, what the paper said, right? That's the quote, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So therefore, there's a 27 that is um, in addition to the 
It's like the 20 in a 4,000 years. But then there's a 27 that happened before. Here's, here's, here's what I can tell you. Here's what I can tell you. What I'm focusing on is the time of elapsed. It's, it, it's, it doesn't matter to me how old Adam was at the scene. Because what I can tell you is that Adam was not born as a baby. Adam was created as a man. Are you there with me? And so we can't even begin to number at that point. So, it, so the age of Adam starts from when he's actually occupying Earth and not an age in life when you and I is born and starting to come up. I know, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying, yes. if, a, if, if you have a 4,000 square, 4,000 square when, and it was AD 27, mm -hmm. then there's a 27 that must be missing for the 4,000. How do you come? Sorry, you can't now I'm asking you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, well, actually, we, we are spanning across B.C. and A.D. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking you how you come. But when you come from B.C. to A.D., you have a four years gap. You do? Yeah. Four years gap? Yeah. You, you say four years is missing? What do you mean by a four years gap? I can't really explain it, but I'm sure when they said when you... What, what I'm saying is, you, when you're counting, you can't have a gap. When you're counting AD, ABC going into AD, yeah. there is, um, you don't say BC1 and then, then AD1. You said BC4, and then that's how I see when you're reading it, but not when on this documentation. All right. So, so, so as I said before, um, I don't suppose things. There has to be a clear reference. And I understand you're inferencing from the reference here. That's what you're doing, inferencing from the reference. But what is critical with this reference? As I'm saying, Sister Donna, it is not, if you look at what we're saying, it's not critical as how, what's the importance of how long Adam was there before sin. What is critical is that from the point of Adam's failure to the point when Christ was in the wilderness, 4,000 years had spanned. What is important for that is because the quote that we read from Bible made it clear that how many years for the controversy? Only what? 6,000 years. So when we have this point, we have somewhere to start from at this point coming to our time. What is critical from there to now is to understand the time in which we are as it relates to the second coming of Christ. That's the point I'm driving at. That's the point I want you to stay at. That's what is critical. Sister um, Marvin. Yes, sir. Yeah. It started when Adam said. What started? The controversy. Is that when it started? The controversy as it relates to earth. Don't miss it, you know. The controversy started where? In heaven. In heaven. But as it relates to the second coming of Christ. Watch me now, church. As it relates to the second coming of Christ, what is the reference of that controversy? You have to go back to the garden of where? Eden. When was the proclamation made? Genesis 3.15, was that because of sin in, wait, wait, was that because of the controversy in heaven or because of what happened in the Garden of Eden? Garden of Eden, and then God made the proclamation in Genesis 3.15, and it's going to run from then until the controversy is over in Revelation. What God is doing with these quotes and references is helping his people if they are, um, Discipline enough to understand the time in which we live in. Will we know the day and the hour? No. Matter of fact, what if I tell you that in great controversy, at this moment we'll not know that day and hour. But what if I tell you after probation closes, yeah. Yeah. those who are sealed, yeah. they, they are going to hear the what? 
When they hear the voice, what does the word hear? Thunder. Thunder. But they hear the what? Voice, voice of God. And what will that voice tell them? The day and the hour. About? Uh, about the book, what I just said, the year in the I'm referencing great controversy. Sorry, I said that. Okay, so now I'm talking about Daniel 12. Daniel 12 one says? <coughs> Michael standing. Mm -hmm. What do you gather from that? Uh, from, uh, what I gather from the great controversy. Yeah. Uh, he would say it is finished. The, the statement in great controversy that speaks to God telling let me tell you why God gives the very day and hour. It is to encourage his people. Yes. She speaks about it. It's all in the chapter why. He gives them the very day and hour to encourage his people who are going through a season of great distress. Yes. They will hear that. She speaks about it. It's all here in the chapter. And that's why I'm asking. Yes. Is it after Daniel 12 1? So I'm asking. If it's after Daniel 12 1? Yes. What happens in Daniel 12 1? Daniel 12 1 says, yeah, what does that mean? I, I reckon that it's said that when Christ stands up at that time, he will say it is finished. And then, and then um, so from then, yeah. he will then tell his people, because probation, human probation is closed. So he can then tell his people the day and hour from that point. Okay. Next slide. I saw that. The 144,000 yes. that was cho chosen and reserved for Christ before he comes in, those are the ones that will know the time and the day. Yeah, the 144. Yeah. Yes. All right. The fullness of time was 27 AD. Now, it says, this is Desire of Ages, page 31, paragraph 1. Now, when the fullness of time was what? Come. God said for it is who? So, to redeem them that were what? Okay. Under the law that we might receive the what? Adoption of sons. Continuing in paragraph 2, same page, 31, Desire of Ages. The Savior's coming was foretold in where? What, what verse is that? What chapter? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When Adam and Eve first heard the promise, they looked for its what? Speedy fulfillment. Matter of fact, do you know when they had the first son? Cain. Do you know that they thought that Cain was that promise? Mm -hmm. Did you know that they faltered as parents? They treated Cain more special than Abel. Mm -hmm. And when God rejected Cain's offering, he couldn't take the rejection and he killed Abel. Mm -hmm. All of that is in Patriots and Prophets. We just have to read. When Adam and Eve first heard the promise, they looked for its speedy fulfillment. They joyfully welcomed their firstborn son, hoping that he might be the deliverer. But the fulfillment of the promise, it did what? Harry. Those who, were, who first received it died without the sight. From the days of Enoch, the promise was repeated through patriots and prophets, keeping alive the hope of his appearing, and yet he came not. The prophecy of Daniel revealed the time of his advent, first advent, Daniel chapter 9. But not all rightly interpreted the message. Century after century passed away, the voices of the prophet ceased, the hand of the oppressor was heavy upon Israel, and many were ready to exclaim, the days are prolonged, and what? Every vision failed. Next slide. What were the conditions prevailing at the first coming of Christ? Whatever conditions were prevailing at the first coming of Christ is the same conditions that will be prevailing at the second coming of Christ. It says, Zach 8, page 32, paragraph 2, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. Providence had directed the movements of nations and the tide of human impulse and influence until the world was ripe for the coming of the deliverer. The nations were united under what? So when Christ's second coming, the nations are also going to be united under? Ungovernment. You ever heard the term New World Order? Yes. yes. All right. So they were united under one government. Okay? One language was widely spoken. How much language? One language was widely spoken. 
Which language is widely spoken today? English. 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 All right. And was everywhere recognized as the language of literature. From all lands, the Jews of the dispersion gathered to Jerusalem to the annual feast. As they, as these returned to the places of their sojourn, they could spread throughout the world the tidings of the Messiah's coming. Now, Genesis 11 verse 5, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. The people is what? One. And they have all what? One language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Two things must happen before Jesus comes. All nations will be one. And they will speak one language. Meaning they'll be saying the same thing. That's what the new world order is about. All right. Let's look at this picture here. Handelsstadt, Andersblatt, Andersblatt, this is German. Um, they say, come the Nachstick, Europlisty. Okay? Mm. This means that um, one, they're coming one, one, one government for, for, for Europe. Down here it said, wir brauchen ein globalen Vorgehen, which means we need one world government, basically. That's what this is saying down here. If you can look, it says EU. That's European Union. But this picture is um, this picture is telling. What does it look it's like? Babel Tower. A Babel Tower. It says Patriot and Prophet, page one eighteen, paragraph five. Says here they decided to build a city, and in it a tower of such stupendous height as should render it the wonder of the world. These enterprises were designed to prevent the people from scattering abroad in colonies. God had directed men to disperse throughout the earth, to replenish and subdue it. But these Babel builders determined to keep their community united in one body and to found a monarchy that should eventually embrace the whole earth. Yeah. Thus their city would become the metropolis of a universal empire. Its glory would command the admiration and homage of the world and render the founders illustrious. The magnificent tower reaching to the heavens was intended to stand as a monument of the power and wisdom of its builders, perpetuating their fame to the last, latest generation. Every world power that tries to do this fail. Yes. This, this kingdom tried to do that. Britain failed. France Fail. Mm -hmm. And Rome, we are told in prophecy, who is going to get back a healing one last time is Rome from the Lamb Light Beast, which is America. Okay, and all are going to fall underneath. And when you look at Revelation 17, that the five that was, the one is, and the one that's coming next, and the one that comes after him shall rule for a short time. All these things relating to the kingdoms, all right, and it's going to pass over the final power to the woman that rides the beast. Church and state. Woman, church, beast, kingdom. All right? So, it's going to fail. Let's go forward. It says, Satan must impersonate who? Christ before the coming of the Lord. Now, Matthew 24, verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, but shall deceive many. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and no marvel. For who? Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. One of the greatest deceptions that's going to hit this world is Satan coming exactly like Christ. Can he reproduce it um, um, fully though? He, he's going to touch earth. Will, will Christ touch the earth? No. no? Mm -mm. Christ will touch the earth. Yes. His glory is going to be partial. going to be bits. Christ's glory is going to end the whole earth. But his one is going to be easy, as you said. Matter of fact, there's another thing to that. When Christ comes, you don't need to tell me. Yeah. I, I don't need to go on the station to tell the world. No, you can't. Oh, no. Oh, no. When the real boss reach. But, but this deception, it's going to be noise abroad. Christ has come, this here and there falls. Falls. Will people be tricked by it? 
Yes. Oh, multitudes. Even Seventh-day Adventists. You know, you know why Seventh-day Adventists are going to get a big deception in the latter part of it? Because Seventh-day Adventists have become very dumb. Yes. We have all the information, you know. What happens to a head that's in a room that's full of books but don't read? It's an atheist. Nothing happens to that head because nothing is in it. You have to read for something to happen. And if you read good material, then good things will happen. Are you there? You have to read. I remember an old, old man said to me once, reading is the royal road to intellectual eminence. I'd rather to be a poor man with many books than a king who doesn't know how to read. <laughs> you have to read. The, the, the Spirit of God is going to bring back things to your mind. How do you think it works? If nothing is in the file, can the Spirit of God help you? No. But if it's there, it can bring it back to your memory. Amen. To the frontal lobe. Yes. Are you there? It says here, this is last day events, or testimonies to the church, volume 8, page 28, 1904, it says, a power from beneath is working to bring about the last great seeds in the drum. Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in what? Secret societies. Okay? Let's read down here, Revelation 1, 13 to 15. As a crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as a consummation of our hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in Revelation. That's Revelation 1, verse 13 and 15. And many people are going to be deceived. You see the 140 and 4,000? They are well studied. But they not only are well studied, they live mm. the truth. That's going to be the big, big difference. Many of us in here today, we know a lot of things. But what separates the 144,000 we have to strive to be in it is that their life emulates. Mm -hmm. That's where we're striving. You and I are striving. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet to hell. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air. Crisis come. Crisis come. That shout alone let me know this is not Christ. No one needs to do that. The whole world is going to know Amen. when Christ comes. That's right. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Every eye is going to be visible, audible. Every ear shall hear. Yes. And it's going to be literal. Okay? Every eye shall see visible. Every ear shall hear audible. And it's going to be literal. There's no secret rapture. Yes. Nothing secret about Christ coming. It's going to be like loud trumpets. The earth is going to shake. Waterfalls will turn back upward. Everything is going to be out of order. When the real boss steps in. And, and how, let me ask you, what is the sign that we know that's him coming? How do we know? What does the quote say? It's well, I mean, every eye could see something coming, but what do we know and we know that's it? We're going to know that sign. We're going to see a cloud and settle like, like the size of a man's fist. And as it comes to the earth and gets closer, it gets more bright and more glorious. Which side is it coming from? Out of where will it come? You have to remember these things, you know? keeps your mind. You know what to look for. All right. It says here, um, the people prostrate themselves. This is the deception of Satan. You know? The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed his disciple when he was up on the earth. His voice is soft and subdued. That's Satan, yet full of melody. What do we know about Satan? Who directly the choir? We're not frightened about a melody. How much pipes in I? More five pipe? Soprano. Tenor. Four. Alto. R7. All I know, whether you want to say five, four, or seven, it's in the Bible. Okay, not remember exactly now. But one of us is correct. 
The man of more than one pipe in hell. You know, you know what I believe about Satan? He could open his mouth and the choir sings. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know when a choir, you stand up and you say choir, go, hmm, and you hear the alto and the tenor and the bass. And, well, Satan alone could open his mouth and hear that. That's, that's what he has. So he's going to have melody. In gentle, compassionate tones, he presents some of the same gracious heavenly truths which the Savior uttered. He heals the disease of the people. Do you know Satan can put disease upon you and take it back out? Yes. You have to remember these things and they think I drop things up. He heals people of disease. And let me ask you something. When he might heal people of disease, you think you can't tell them no? And this is Jesus. Not true. We're going to have a hard time convincing people this is deception. He's going to heal people of their disease, church. And then in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to what? Sunday. Now we catch you. <laughs> now we catch you, you little crook. Uh huh. He 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 and commands us to hold the day which he has blessed. He declares that those who persist in keeping hold of the seventh day are blaspheming his name by refusing to listen to his angels sent to them with light and truth. This is the strong, almost overmastering illusion, like the Samaritans who were deceived. By Simon Magnus, the multitudes from the least to the greatest give heed to these sorceries, saying, This is the great power of God. You remember Simon Magnus? Yes. In the book of Acts? Yes. You know what, you know what is frightening about it? What was being said was not wrong, you know, but it was coming from sorcery. And Paul rebuked it. See the deception that's coming? You know the only persons who are going to survive? Those who... Well, it's done. Oh, yeah. <coughs> All right, let's move to the next slide. It says, Satan prepares for battle. Now, when the wicked are raised, Satan must have some time to prepare them for battle. Now, if 2027 is the end of the 6,000-year period of war against God, then this would exclude the time of preparation required after the wicked are raised. There's going to be some time there. Is it possible that a time could be cut off? And I'm just asking a question. Is it possible that a time could be cut off from the 6,000 years before 2027? If so, then Christ must come sometime before 2027 to allow for this and only put in questions on the board. So we think, we can think. Now Romans 9.28 says, For he will what? Finish the work and what? Cut it short in what? Righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. But there's another thing. I didn't put those quotes on the slide, but I tell you that it's here. Not remember it exactly. I think it's the same C O N. What's C O N again? Confrontation. Confrontation. Now, she speaks about the temptation. That's A D 27. But Ellen White also speaks about the 4,000 years at the birth of Christ. There's a quote where she speaks about the 4,000 years at the birth of Christ. There's another quote where she speaks about the 4,000 years at the death of Christ. Are all of them the same? If you were calculating, which one would you use? As a matter of fact, when was the birth of Christ? BC 4. Yes. BC 4. When was the death of Christ? AD what? AD 31. AD 31, BC 4, AD 27. Are they all the same? No. Why are you, why are you quiet? Are they all the same? No. no. Those are three different years. Now, if you're going to calculate, which one would you use? Would you use the least, the middle, or, or the greatest? Which one would you use? No. If you're going to calculate. When you're calculating in maths, in order not to... If you use four, you're going to miss time. You're going to miss time because that's his birth. 
Did he live after his birth? Yes. Uh -huh. If you use 27 AD, you're going to miss time. That's his baptism. Did he stop at his baptism? No. Or did he have three and a half more years of ministry? Three and a half years. So when is his latest date? AD what? Did he continue after that? He died. So what was Ellen White trying to say? The period of Christ was the 4,000 year mark of sin. The period of Christ. Period of Christ was from 4 BC to 31 AD. All right? 4 BC to 31 AD. Some people say if it's the 4,000 years, okay, which carries you to Christ in the wilderness, which is the same as his baptism, then they work from AD 27. That's how you get 2,027. Because we are going from the quote that how long must sin and the controversy span? The span, how long? 6,000 6, years. 6,000 years. Can, okay, when we reach to the end, we're going to have the camera turn on this. Um, so 6,000 years. So if you, if you go from AD 27, where many go, and this is 4,000, how much do you need? 2,000. To get to 6,000. How much do you need? 2,000. Now, what does AD mean? Adonis Domina. That's, 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 that means in the year of our Lord. Okay? So we are in the year of our Lord 2024. So AD 27 was in the year of our Lord 27. But at that point, as, they, as, as we're told in the, in the prophecy, that was 4,000 years. So some start from the AD 27. And they said that they are going to add 2,000 to 4,000. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you understand why somebody would do that? I'm asking you a question. Do you understand why somebody would add 2,000 to the AD 27? No. Yeah. You don't? Who does? Yeah. I don't. Okay. How long will the controversy span? Six thousand. Okay. If at AD 27, it spans for how long? Four thousand. So four thousand from six thousand leave how much? Two thousand. So at AD 27, it was four thousand. How much is left? Two thousand. So do you understand how they reach 2027? Yes. Two thousand plus 27 gives you how much? 2027. What year are we in? How much year before we get to 2023? Three. 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 Or, um, yeah, but does it, does it depend on which calendar you're using? Yeah, because you've got the Gregorian. <coughs> this is Gregorian uh, that's, calendar. That's another and point. And that's a Roman, it's a papacy then. Yeah. That changed the calendar. That's, that's another point, but here's, here's the next point. Both of them elapse mm -hmm. on each other. In other words, there's a point when you can be in the Gregorian calendar, but you're not in the Jewish calendar. Mm -hmm. But you do get in the Jewish calendar while you're still in the Gregorian calendar. Mm -hmm. Because the Jewish calendar starts around April each year. Mm -hmm. So when we're celebrating a new year in January, it's not yet a new year. But by the time you get to the spring, March into April of the new moon, you start counting on the Jewish calendar while it is still early in that year. So that's why I said there is an elapse. Mm -hmm. So it still carries over. There is an elapse. Like we know the seventh month of that Jewish calendar elapses and falls in the period of October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why William Miller found his time in that period. Mm -hmm. Okay? But on the Gregorian calendar, they have October as what month? Right. Tenth month, okay. So, so, so that is why I'm saying there is a an elapse. It's like you're doing math. You remember when you used to draw the rings, 
and you had a, a subset and, a, and an elapse and stuff, slight errors and elapse. But that's a strong point that has been put forward because as it relates to prophecy, that you must march the time on the right calendar, which is the Jewish calendar. However, however, because of the very fact that the years elapse across when counting, okay, then it could fall in the same year. If we're going to talk about the Jewish calendar, yes. they use two, two calendars. Mm -hmm. So it depends on which one, which one, what the prophecy is based on what is called the carrying calendar, which starts, which is, which is Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. So the prophecy is based on that. So if you use accounting based on that calendar, you can arrive at 2027. Some arrives at 2027. As he said, you can. I start my timing from AD 31. Mm -hmm. Why? That's the latest time as it relates to Christ. Christ was still here at 84, BC 4, just born. Still here at AD 27. Ministry didn't start as yet, but he died. And the temple was rent at AD 31. I'm coming to a point. So, if you start at AD 31, mm -hmm. at the 4,000 mark, as Ellen White also references death, 4,000 years, and you need to get to 6,000 years when sin will reign, then you need to add 2,000 to 8031. That will also carry you to 2031. Mm -hmm. no, I did make a statement earlier, and I'm going to come back to that statement when I'm closing. Somebody says, is pastor saying Christ is coming 2031? I never said that. I never pastor, said that. Well, pastor, well, um, you're quoting from Con. 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 Has had three names, but it depends on who compiled those other two. Every every quote that has been put up here, whether it be GC or confrontation, all of them are from the pen of inspiration. Are you sure? Of that? Very sure of that. And don't be. I do not. I, I understand compilation and know where to draw the line. I do not get extreme. Some people get extreme, and some people are actually at the place where. If it's not directly a book from the conflict of the ages, they don't read it. I know that's not too wise because we understand inspiration and when it still aligns. But, mm -hmm. but, but we also know very well that the enemy is at the EGY estate. The enemy is everywhere. Right, and they have been, they have been, um, they have been copying their writing. You, you can know, you can know, I don't know where you're getting at still, but you can know when something is inspired or not inspired. There is, there is a statement I have an issue with in Adventist Home as it relates to the Christmas tree. Are you there with me? You can know when a writing is off or when it is not. Yes. Leroy Fulmer, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. 
I know all of those controversies. And I understand what it will do to the mind. Mm -hmm. And some people, some people will just write off the book evangelism. Mm -hmm. No. We know, we know when. But but it's your free choice. Yes. Okay, well, yes, yeah, so I'm saying the reason why I wouldn't use the URR book because the purpose of the Jesuit is to destroy Adventists and he came to do our work and he did do our dirty work. I know, so I, I, I know everything. I know everything that I mean. I would recommend this book to you. Uh, you, would not, you would not have me up here studying from um, the coming of the comfort. Alright? Now Romans chapter 9 verse 28 says, For he will finish the work and cut it short in what? Righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. CET 107 uh, paragraph 2 says, Those who are not interested in the cause of God on earth, can never sing the song of redeeming love above. I saw that the quick work that God was doing on the earth would soon be what? Cut short in what? Right. Righteousness, and that the messengers must go speed swiftly on their way to search out the scattered flock. Time is almost no more. Let's, we're almost to the end. Let's come um, early writings, page 292, paragraph 2. All are seeking to hide in the rocks to shield themselves from the terrible glory of him whom they once despised and overwhelmed. And paid with his majesty and exceeding glory, they with one accord raise their voices and with terrible distinctness exclaim, Blessed is he that what? Comet in the name of the Lord. Next slide. Early writings again, page 293, continuing paragraph 1. Then Jesus and the holy angels accompanied by all the saints again go to the city and bitter lamentations and wailings of the doom wicked fill the air. Then I saw that Satan again, this is the work, this is the question I'm asking, that Satan is going to do a work and this time must be counted in. He says, then I saw that Satan again commenced his work. He passed around his subjects and made the weak and feeble what? Strong and told them that he and his angels were powerful. He pointed to the countless millions who had been raised. There were mighty warriors and kings who, who were well skilled in battle and who had conquered kingdoms. And there were mighty giants, valiant men who had never lost a battle. Can you agree that this is going to take some time as they strategize, as they plan, how long, not sure. Watch this, 293 again, early writings. This was, there was proud and ambitious who? Napoleon. Napoleon. So you know when we read these things, we have an idea that definitely Napoleon is lost. He's coming up in the second resurrection right here. Whose approach had caused kingdoms to tremble. There stood men of lofty stature and dignified bearing who had fallen in battle while thirsting to conquer. As they come forth from their graves, they resume the current of their thoughts where it what? Seized in death. You get the principle right there? When you die, wherever your thought was, wherever it was, that's when you pick it up, when you come out of the grave. Some people die in a very bad condition. That's where they're picking it up, when they come out of the grave. As it says, it's, it, call, it continued where it sees. They possess the same desire to conquer, which rule when they fail. Satan consults with his angels, and then with those kings and conquerors and mighty men, then he looks over the vast army and tells them that the company in the city is what? Small and feeble, and that they can go up and take it and cast out its inhabitants and possess its riches and glory themselves. Hmm. All right, we're going to close on this quote. Now, um, we can accept time. We cannot set time. What we have with the quotes is an idea. Here is one principle we know. The great controversy cannot pass how many years? Six thousand. Can't pass 6,000 years. We have an idea at the point when it was how many years? 4,000 4, years. And therefore, we can count from that point to get the best idea because we know that what? 2,000 more years carries it to six. Right. Now, how much of that 2,000 years is gone is the question. 
Mm. Somebody says, but Pastor Lecky, you carry yours to 2031. And now I'm going to add something. Plus or minus. Yeah. Why did I put plus or minus? Who reserves the time as it relates to God can cut the time short? Are you there with me? Yes. God can extend, but still it must fall within what parameter? What's the span of the great controversy? Now, brethren, I want to make something clear as we're close. How far is 2027? Not very huh? far. Not far, right? If you stretch to 2031, how far is that? Now, 2027, is it within your lifetime and mine? Yes. Mm. 2031, is it within your lifetime or mine? Yes. Now, you know, what, you know what is surprising? All the articles we keep reading, what is one of the common years that they keep quoting? 2031. No, 2030. 2030. 2030, you shall have nothing and be happy. When they say we're going to fix climate change at about a certain time, 2030. When they say if we don't fix this by now, then the world is going to be displaced by when? 2030. Ellen White says in the book of education, we need to watch and follow the thinking men mm. of our generation. Mm. How close is 2030 to 2031? You know what I'm trying to say today as we close? We are in the last period and the closing up of the final period of the 6,000 year span of the great controversy. Yes? yes? Because you've got also, within that, you can remove the three and a half, the uh, 42, 42 days. 42 days? Or is it three and a half years for persecution? Mm. So if you go backwards, they give you a, a rough time where we really are. And, and as, and yes. The, uh, the 20, uh, 25, it's actually 24, which is here. The what? 2024. If you don't look at the uh, Gregorian time okay. calendar, you look at the Jewish calendar, which is 2024. Plus, you've got three and a half years persecution. It gives you a rough idea that we need to be ready now. You not know, tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, but anytime now. You know what is the, as we conclude, you know what is the, you know what, you know what is very important as we are closing up this Bible study? There might be deviations of whether this person uses this calendar or that person uses that calendar. But you know what's funny when you listen to it all? Mm. None of them gives you 10 years. No. None of them gives you 8 years. Mm. Do you understand the point? Mm. Wow. We are in, yes. my beloved brothers and sisters, the last decade That's right. of Earth's history. What's a decade? 10 years. Ten years. And I am, I am We're having being, that. We're having I am being cautious when I say use the term decade. We don't have 10 years. But the point stands. We are in the final decade of the great controversy. Now, let me ask you another question. Let's say we had 10 years. I'm just reasoning, okay? Let's say we had 10 years. How quickly does 10 years go by? Just like that. Just like that. And when we look at the study, it's quite possible that we actually don't have so much time. But when should you be ready? No. 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 So what is the key of this study? Two main points. One, while we do not know the exact, exact year or so much the day and the hour, we know we are in the final period. Can we agree to that? Yes. And number two, you need to get ready. And if you are ready, you need to stay ready. So I cannot, in any good conscience, if I'm any sensible Seventh-day Adventist, be talking things like, well, we don't know when Christ comes. It could be the next 50 years now. Mm -hmm. Don't talk like that. No. No, no. no. Because nothing we, like we're that. We're going to miss the boat completely. Nothing like that. No. Nothing no. like that. No. This is the last quote. Letter 12, 1890. Mm -hmm. The very last deception of Satan will be to what? Make of non-effect the what? Testimony of the what? 
Spirit of God. It says, where there is no vision, the what? The people perish. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Satan will work. How? Ingeniously. In what? Different ways and through what? Different agencies to do what? Unsettle the confidence of who? God's remnant people in the true testimony. He will bring in what? Spurious visions to do what? Mislead and to do what? Mingle the what? Falls with the true. A little, uh, 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 this, this also reflects what um, Donald was saying earlier about the infiltration and a mingling. Are you there with me? Yeah. And so this, this God's people that they will regard everything that bears the name of what? Visions as a species of what? Fanatism. I tell brethren that I'll listen. Anybody says I got a vision, I'll listen. Because then I will match it against the, the standard. Right. The standard. Alright? So it says, but honest souls by contrasting false and true will be able to do what? Distinguish between them. Kind of what the young lady was saying earlier as well. We have enough. We have enough to compare, to know that this is in line and this is not. We have enough. So as she says, by contrasting what? False and true will be enabled to do what? To distinguish between them. But I wanted to go back to the top as we close. The very last. The, the what? Very last. When she says the very last, what comes after that? Nothing. Nothing. If she says the very last, the word very last, which other deception is coming after that? No. As it relates to the church, she says the very last deception of Satan will be to do what? Make of what? None effect the what? Testimony of the Spirit of God. And what is the testimony of the Spirit of God? It is the what? Spirit of God. Prophecy and what is the especially the last day prophets to the church in these final hours? Yes, we have the Bible. Yes, Ellen G. White. And, and one of the great books as we hold the Bible, and the next one we must hold is the Great Controversy. Are you there with me? Tells you about the signs. And I want to add another book because that speaks to your character. Many of us need to go into that book, The Desire of Jesus. Because if you know the prophecies without the character of Christ, where are you going? Where are you going? Nowhere. You're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. Don't miss the point of this Bible class as I'm going to close. We are in the final generation. We are in the final period. Jesus is about to come. And in our generation, we shall see the King. As I said earlier in the sermon, the only way you will miss seeing that second coming is if you die. Because you can die tomorrow. Are you there with me? And that's quicker than how quick Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. But if you live long enough, church, you shall see that small crowd. You shall go through the time of Jacob's trouble. You shall see all the troubles coming on the world and the seven last place. And by God's grace, may if, not if, may when that day comes, you are found in Christ. Amen. Now, let's come full circle. What was the title of the Bible class? Nearer, nearer than when we first did. Do you agree? Yes. Is it nearer? Yes. yes. Much nearer than when we first believed? Yes. So we all to get ready. I want to tell you thanks to those here, the brethren here in England, for extending your warm, cordial invitation to us, the Falling the Blueprint Ministry in Jamaica. A part, a little part of us came, and we pray and hope that you were blessed, Amen. you were invigorated Amen. spiritually, Amen. you learned, and you grew. Amen. And may now, as we close, that you will take this fire and continue to fan the flame, Amen. and do your work in this part of the village. Amen. We pray for you and you pray for us. Amen. And may we be faithful. Amen. He that can endure to the end, the same, the same shall be saved. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. Let us pray. Loving Lord,
Eternal Father, we just thank you for another Sabbath. And even as we look at the ending of another week, we just tell you thanks. Probationary period is still open and we are still in the land of the living. Lord, the work you began in us, finish it unto the end. And save us, O Father, in your eternal kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. 